Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a French horror drama film called They Came Back. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins in an anonymous French town, where one day, a crowd of revived dead people walk out of the cemetery unexplained. They calmly stream down the road in a silent procession, while the bystanders watch in astonishment. As the crowd gets larger, the town council holds a meeting to discuss the matter. They're just as perplexed as the common people. The mayor reveals that the entire world is facing the same situation at the moment, and no one knows what is causing the dead to come back to life. Initial estimates show that more than 70 million men and women have revived all over the world, and the counting is still going on. In their town alone, almost 13,000 people have come back to life. The flow of the dead coming out of the cemetery lasted for about two hours. Apparently, the returnees include men and women who have died in the past 10 years. After referring to the death registers, it is found that the crowd consists of people of all ages, but more than 65% of them are over the age of 60. One thing remains the same in all the revived individuals. They all are in good health, unlike their conditions before their deaths. To keep these people off the streets and provide them with shelter, the mayor requisitions the local community center and warehouses. He says that it is vital to keep all the returnees together to identify them and send them back to their families because they are now the citizens of the nation and deserve rights. The committee together estimates that they have to keep the returnees in such facilities for three to six months and dismisses the meeting. Soon, the dormitories start being prepared where the individuals will be accommodated according to their gender and age. Among the revived individuals is the mayor's wife, Martha. Someone brings her to the mayor, but he refuses to see her and sends her home. A member of the town council named Isham had lost his six-year-old boy, Sylvain, some years ago. He and his wife, Veronique, go to one of the dorms looking for the kid. On their way, they see many returned people who are being tested and interviewed. The returnees seem to be void of emotions as they stare into the distance and do not indulge in conversation until they are approached by someone first. The couple shows Sylvain's pictures to the officials who ask them to wait. They are also told that they can either take the kid home or leave him in the dorm if they aren't ready. When the kid arrives in front of his parents, they are beyond shocked. The scene shifts to the mayor's home where he meets his deceased wife for the first time. She acts like she has never been gone and asks him why he is late. Meanwhile, Isham's co-worker, Rachel, is in her home overwhelmed by everything that is going on. Her husband, Matthew, died in a car crash two years ago, but she has already accepted his death, so she isn't sure if she should welcome him back to her life. The following day at work, Isham tells her that his son is exactly like how he was prior to his death. He acts like nothing has changed. He also asks Rachel if she plans to bring Matthew home, but Rachel just dismisses the conversation. The town council holds a meeting again after a few days. They are now concerned about the potential unemployment and housing problem in the future. Moreover, the returnees are slow and they cannot communicate well, which means they are not as efficient as they were in their previous jobs. The council also addresses that the revived people suffer from effects similar to those that may be seen after a severe concussion, such as disorientation, sleep disturbance, and wandering. But for some strange reason, their motor functions are unharmed. Then, we are shown Matthew, who has returned to his job as an architect. However, he is sluggish in his job and only speaks when people talk to him first. Rachel has still not tried to find him. Soon, another problem for the council arises when the returned start to walk out to the woods at night. Researchers believe that they might be trying to look for a familiar place, or it could just be a response to the traumatic experience of dying. To solve this problem, a doctor named Gardet develops a sedative that only works on the returned. He also trains the security guard at the dorm on how to stop them from wandering off to the woods. While observing the sleeping revived people, he notices Matthew dressing up and walking out. The security guard claims that he does this every night and goes to his work. The doctor finds this strange and follows Matthew to his work. There, he sees a group of returned people having a meeting. According to the watchman, they do this every day. One day, Rachel is returning home from work when she notices Matthew following her. The two do not talk and simply make their way home. Dr. Gardet, who has been observing Matthew's behavior, follows them. Rachel is still not comfortable being around her husband, so she goes to her room, claiming that she has to rest. 
At the mayor's home, he organizes a party to reintroduce Martha to the family members. However, in between the dinner, she stops talking and walks away towards the woods. Her caretaker says that she has been walking around the yard the entire day. The mayor follows his wife and tries to bring her back to the table, but she continues walking without any explanation. Meanwhile, at night, Rachel approaches Matthew and starts a conversation. She eventually kisses him, hopefully after asking if he's brushed his teeth, and the two end up having intercourse in the living room while the doctor spies on them through the window. This man is a true scientist. In the next council meeting, a lady brings up the fact that the revived people have body temperature lower than a normal person. Because of this, they are picked up by thermal cameras as whitish figures. So, the council decides to observe their activities through the cameras attached to hot air balloons spread throughout the town. Their main aim is to find out more about the nightly meeting that the returnees often hold in different parts of town. When the first set of reports arrives, a surprising element is found. All the returnees, whether they be young or old, cover a distance of at least nine miles every day. They end the meeting by stating when more data is recovered, they can point out the similarities and frequencies of the returnee gatherings. One day, Rachel and Matthew are sunbathing beside a lake. Rachel, who is skeptical about Matthew's return, is now comfortable around him. The returnees in the lake can be easily identified by their stiffness. The couple meets Dr. Gardet there. He explains Matthew's behavior to Rachel and tells her he is recovering quickly from the trauma. At night, Rachel hears a noise and goes to her backyard, only to find that the doctor has followed them home. On questioning, he says that he wants to help her cope with the situation, claiming that he knows how she feels. He inquires if she knows that Matthew wakes up at night to go to his work. Rachel says he just has trouble falling asleep and insists her husband is normal. After making him go away, she returns to her bedroom and finds Matthew awake. He asks her if she was talking to someone, but she lies and says she wasn't. The next day at work, Matthew submits his work to his boss, but his reports make little to no sense. Even when the boss explains his errors, Matthew doesn't understand. Hence, he is demoted to the technical part of the company where other returnees like him work. In the following town council meeting, the officials declare that the semi-normal behavior that the returnees show is an illusion. They have been imitating the expressions of the living and following the memories of what they used to do before their deaths to create an illusion of being normal. But they are not capable of innovative jobs at all. At night, Matthew gets dressed without Rachel knowing and goes to his work. This time, the doctor overhears what the returnees talk about in their meetings. They seem to be talking normally about city maps and areas around the town. Meanwhile, the kid, Sylvain, wakes up in the middle of the night and bangs on his front door, wanting to get out. His parents are worried about him. The school has informed them to take Sylvain somewhere else because he scares the other kids. His mother cries, saying that all he wants to do is run away from them. Similarly, the mayor's wife also tries escaping by jumping off a fence, but the mayor stops her. The following day, he talks to Rachel about his wife. He is worried that one day he will wake up at night and she will be gone, but Rachel claims that it is their fate. It is clear that all the returnees are trying to escape from their homes and gather together, but no one can decipher what they are talking about in their nightly meetings. Rachel goes to Dr. Gardet that day to ask him how she can help Matthew get back to normal, but the doctor says that she can never bring him back to how he was before he died. The most he can do is remember everything that happened before his death. The doctor also shows her a clip of Matthew, saying that he met Rachel two weeks ago when he had been dead for two years before that. Rachel loses all hopes of getting her husband back and returns home only to find him missing. Somewhere else, a security guard finds Matthew and other returnees in a field and asks them to go away. Just then, a loud explosion is heard from nearby. Following that, the returnees detonate several explosions throughout the city. All of them have come to the street and make their way to a tunnel. The mayor wakes up to his wife missing and drives around looking for her. He eventually finds her in the streets and forcefully gets her into the car. However, the other returnees block him from driving away. Martha asks the mayor if he is tired. When he doesn't reply, she inquires if he wants to join them. She has sensed that he is on the brink of death. As she calmly talks to him, he passes away and joins the returnees. Meanwhile, at Isham's home, Sylvain is still trying to escape. His mother wants to let go of him, but Isham insists he will keep the kid forever. As they talk, Sylvain falls off the balcony from the second floor. He stands up 
and joins a returnee man who had been waiting for him. In retaliation to the explosions, the military gasses the returnees with a chemical that induces a permanent coma. After guiding some of the revived people to the tunnels, Matthew makes his way back to a worried Rachel. He tells her everything that happened on the day of his fatal car accident. He remembers that they had a fight and he took off in his car, angrily. When he returned home, Rachel was missing, so he went looking for her. Knowing that Matthew is looking for her when the accident happened, Rachel cries. She follows him into the tunnels, tearfully kissing him goodbye, before he disappears into the darkness. In the morning, the military carts away the comatose bodies of the returnees. In the last scene, the bodies are laid atop their graves in the cemetery and slowly vanish. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.